Hey what's going on guys Tanmay here for Telisco Learnings and in this video tutorial we are going to be continuing with our form validations that we saw in the previous video tutorial of this javascript playlist so in the previous video tutorial we took a introduction to what are form validations and we saw a basic form validation wherein we were checking for blank inputs in text boxes so if you we are having blank inputs and we were clicking on the submit button we were getting a pop up message saying that invalid input or blank input and then we were not being able to redirect to the next page which was given in the action that is message.html so in this video what we are going to be doing is we are going to be checking for the length of the text also so in many websites you must have seen that whenever you enter a password if the length of the password is less than certain characters you get a message that the password is too small or too weak right so that kind of functionality also can be done in javascript and that is what we are going to be doing and we are also going to be adding a little bit of css styling so whenever there is a error in some text box we will add a red border to it indicating that there is some problem over there and we can also add a text just besides it saying that it is invalid so that user easily comes to know which text box is having a problem so this is very helpful when it comes to forms which are having a lot of text boxes a lot of radio buttons and a lot of inputs to be given sometimes when you make mistakes you don't know where exactly the mistake has happened but then if there is a red marking or there is some indication on that text box or on that input type then you come to know okay so the mistake is over there and you can easily rectify it so that can be done in javascript also because we can use javascript to manipulate the css also so all these functionalities we are going to be trying to implement in this video tutorial so without spending further time let's get to the coding so here you can see we have our form we have two inputs so this is something that we did in the previous video also we have given ids to our two inputs the first one is username and the second one is password now the form has a action of message.html so this action attribute of the form decides that when the form is submitted what should be the action that is what should happen and when i click on the submit button so we have a button which is of type submit you can see we, we are redirected to the welcome.html page so this is a message.html page which has a text of welcome so if you see over here this is that html and it is only having one h1 tag with welcome message okay so coming back to our default.html what we want is when you click on submit you cannot have blank entries and the password should have a size of greater than 5 so you need more than 5 characters in the password only then it is a valid password so this is that functionality that we are going to be in implementing today so let's quickly start with the function validate so this is that function validate which is being called on the form submit and i hope you guys know why we are calling this validate function in the on submit of form so this on submit event is called when the form is submitted and instead of the button on click event we have to always call validate on this on submit because it has a extra feature wherein you can disable this event using a return value okay so if the return value is a false boolean value then the form cannot be submitted and if it is true only then it will be submitted and only then we will be redirected to message.html so this is something that we again discussed in the previous video so let's start off with the coding creating var u name is equal to document dot get element by id and passing the username so this is how we reference html elements using the id and then doing the same for password passing the id of this html element so now first thing we need to check is for blank values so let's do that i'm going to say if u name dot value equal equal to blank alert blank username okay let's first do the basic functionality and then we'll add that extra additional things of checking the length and adding the css styling also so here i'm going to say trim function or trim method which will prevent us from adding spaces also so if we add spaces also even then this message will be shown blank username because it will trim all these blank spaces let's try this there you go you can see blank username but as of now we are still redirected to the next page because we are not returning any false value from this function so let's do that over here so the last line should be return false so that we are not redirected to the next page so if i hit spaces now if i submit we get blank user but we are still on the same page okay let's add an else if and let's do the password over here so i'm just going to copy this same condition in the else if i'm just going to say password and i'll tell you why i'm doing if and else if separately for username and password without the or clause without using the logical or operator again in this i'm going to copy the same thing i'm going to say blank password and lastly we have one more condition that we also have to check for the size right so i'm going to say else if again 
I'm going to say password dot value dot trim dot length should be greater than five or if it is less than five or less than equal to five. Let's do it less than five in the alert box. I'm going to say password too short. Okay. So the reason why I did three different condition checkings is because we want to check for individual conditions over here. We can add all these conditions in one single if clause also using the or operator, but then we won't be able to find out which condition is becoming false and which one is true. Okay. So that's why we are checking for individual conditions because we want to give individual messages, right? So we'll understand that in a minute. Let's try to first check if this is working. I'm going to say one, two, I'm going to add a password, but it is going to be less than five characters. So I'm going to say one, two, three, four. So now you can see that we have some text in username text box. So this if won't be executed because it is not blank. Even this else if won't be executed because even the password is not blank, but this condition is going to be true because the length is less than five, right? Length is four over here. So now we should actually be getting a custom message saying alert password too short. So let's see if this works. So there you go. You can see we are getting custom message password too short and we are still not redirected to the message.html because we are returning false. Now, if all of these conditions are false, then ultimately in the else, what we can do is we can just return true. And once we return true, this true value is returned over here in the on submit event. And since the on submit event gets true, which means that it is enabled and the on submit happens. So the form is submitted and the action that is message.html is loaded. Okay. So let's see if this works. I'm going to say one, two, I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see if this works. There you go. You can see we are getting the proper output now. Okay. So we pretty much completed our programming part, but we still need to add that red border whenever we are making a mistake or whenever there is an invalid entry, right? So in that case, what you have to do is in these individual conditions. So let's say you are having a blank entry of username. So what you want to do is you want to add a red border to this text box so that the user knows, okay, there is an invalid entry over here. So that can be done by manipulating the CSS and you know that in JavaScript, we can manipulate the CSS also. So what I can say is you name dot style dot border and I can say border is equal to and this is a CSS property. So this is how the syntax goes. I'm going to say border is going to be solid. It's going to be three pixel and the color of the border is going to be red. So this is how the syntax is and this is something that you have to do as it is or you can give a hex value of a color over here. So now let's see. Let's enter the password properly and let's try to submit this. So there you go. You're getting the message blank username and let's see if we are getting the CSS around the text box. So there you go. You can see we are getting a red mark around the username. So now the user knows. Okay. So this is something that we are doing a mistake over here. So even if the alert box didn't show up, even if you can comment the alert box, this red mark will be the indication for the user that he's making some mistake in this text box, right? So another way is you can add label also. So in the HTML code, what I can do is after this input, I can say label, I can give an ID to the label. I can say LBL user and I can write in invalid in the style. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to say color red semicolon. If you want to add inline styles to HTML, you can use the style attribute and then you can give individual CSS styling. And you can separate them by using a semicolon. So this is something related to CSS and I'm going to say visibility hidden. So initially you can see the visibility is hidden for this label, which says invalid. And now what I can do is if the username text box is left blank along with showing this red border around the text box, I can also say document dot get element by ID. I can access that label. The ID given to that label is LBL user. So just use it. I can say dot style dot visibility equal to in double quotes. We have to say visible. So initially the label is invisible because we have still not made any error, but if we leave it blank and if we have entered the password, if I click on submit, now you can see I've commented the alert. So we did not get an alert box, but you can see we got a red mark around the username text box and we also got a message saying invalid. So this is another way in which you can go about doing validations and it is more intuitive because now the user can see where exactly is making a mistake, right? So this same thing can be done for the password also. I'm not going to do it right now because you get the idea, right? You can just add one more label, give it another ID and access that in this else if block, or you can access that same label in this else if block and change the text to password too short, which can be shown over here. So the label text can also be changed by using the inner HTML property. 
Okay, so this was another way in which you can perform validations. This is more intuitive because here the user gets a visual representation of where exactly he is making a mistake. And I would request you guys to try out the same thing for the blank password and the length of the password. Go ahead and try out this styling. You can give different colors. You can increase the size of the border. You can add different text and so on and so forth. So yeah, that's it for this video guys. This was a different way in which you can go ahead and do validations. And in this, what we learned is we also saw the length validation and some visual representations of how validations can be shown. So that's it for this video guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Do share it with your friends. Let me know in the comments how this video was. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.